Now I got a pretty good deal on this Mitsubishi Mighty Max you see behind me here. Uh, you know, I, this is like the third one that I've ever owned, but hey, you know, I got a kind of a soft spot for these trucks, uh, you know, somewhere in my heart. But you know, it may be a really cool build out of this one. But let's get on to this actual episode here. The deal: aluminum bronze. Not a lot of people really understand TIG brazing, aluminum bronze, why you use it, all the rest of that good stuff. And I rarely ever get an opportunity on a weld repair such as this one to really show you what it's doing. So since this is my truck, I get to actually reverse this whole process and show you exactly what we're looking for, why we use it, and all the rest of that good stuff, which is a little bit different than what most people uh, know and understand about the whole process of TIG brazing and, you know, cast uh, iron or cast steel or whatever weld repair. So, let's get on with that episode. Now this is uh, my third Mitsubishi Mighty Max uh, since I was like 17 or 18 years old or something and every single one of them had a crack on the exhaust manifold. It's just, you know, part of the design and what they do but the most common or the most popular spot that this one cracks is right in between uh, both merges for uh, cylinders 1 and 4 and then 2 and 3 and oftentimes it'll crack in between cylinders 2 and 3 but right here at the merge it gets super thin and there's technically a hole on the inside because the O2 sensor is right behind it but yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, specific to this, this model. It doesn't really matter. But either way, the process is the same. The first thing we need to do is identify where the ends of the cracks are. And that is just by removing some of the scale that's on the uh, side of the manifold here. Now, we're ideally looking for... Uh, wherever the crack terminates or wherever we can stop or we don't see it and I'm gonna mark out just ahead of the crack the reason why is if it's gonna propagate or expand while we weld or anything like that we want it to expand into the hole and terminate completely now on this bottom side here I couldn't quite see where the crack ended so I'm going to use a little trick which is a bit of heat now the heat is going to expand it only slightly which will give me better eyes on where that crack terminates uh, and then I can drill my, my hole just ahead of it. Now this hole is only an eighth of an inch in diameter. That's about three millimeters. So no real need to you know put a gigantic hole in it or anything like that. You just need something that would end up uh, stopping the crack from propagating or from continuing on. And it's, it's really not that hard to do. Uh, so just a little tiny hole will do the trick. And you know, you know nothing special. Now I'm gonna chase out this crack with the carbide burr tool. I'm gonna groove it. Now the reason why I'm gonna groove it, and some people will say that this is, you know, you shouldn't do that, there's no reason, this is a waste of time, whatever the case is, I'll show you exactly why I'm doing this. And that's part of how the aluminum bronze will flow uh, in, down into that into that groove and actually uh, create a surface in which it can hold because we're not melting the cast uh, iron, we're not melting the manifold, we're just basically sticking another metal to it and the more you have on there to stick the less likely it's going to crack again uh, since we're not going to actually uh, you know melt it all or fuse all of them together now quick cleaning with some acetone and a wire brush now it's going to be near impossible to get that crack like completely cleaned out unfortunately so even when we start brazing this it's going to uh, it's going to give us some fits it really will there's going to be some junk that floats up into it but I'm going to do my best to burn all of it out now in the event that you did not clean the acetone off of your counter here is a uh, proper 100% correct way to battle the fire and that is with more fire so simply point the torch and pull the trigger and put more fire on it. I'm pretty sure that fire marshal and fire departments, you know what, don't, don't worry about that part. Uh, just, you know, use a fire extinguisher or whatever other means you have. But either way, I'm going to heat this up and we're going to let that crack kind of expand and we're going to kind of, oh, what's a good word for this, kind of normalize everything and then try to burn everything out of it that I can and just, you know, uh, make it a little bit easier to work with. Now, as far as settings go, I'm going to weld in AC, not DC, AC. I want some cleaning action, but I don't need a whole lot. So we're going to concentrate the majority of this on the negative side of the wave. Uh, so 90% electrode negative. Frequency kind of irrelevant. I left it at 110, and I really don't think I need more than 100 amps to, to burn this because we're using the torch as a heat source. We are not actually melting the cast, uh, cast iron. We're just using the torch as a heat source. One more thing before I actually get welding, and that is cleaning these rods up extremely well with a little wipe down of acetone. Then I'm going to gear up, fire the torch right at it. Now, we're going to get in and see this weld here in just a second, or at least this braze in just a second, but notice that I'm doing a lot of movement with my hand. I'm trying to 
push a lot of this junk out of there and you can see some of those sparks that are flying off of there a lot of a lot of garbage that's flying out of there that could be anything from the carbon being infused into the cracks or at least the soot from the exhaust could be a lot of things but this is all very very light dabbing just to get it on here and essentially what i'm doing we're using the torch as a heat source so we don't need to liquefy the cast iron we just need it to uh, get hot and the concentration is mostly on our um, pool itself or our puddle and you notice that there are some you know little fish eyes little bits of junk that come floating up to the surface I want that and that's what one of the things that AC is great for because this is gonna displace a lot of that crap and let the aluminum bronze just really flow right into that into that weld pool and as soon as I get up to the end here um, I'm gonna go back over and I'm gonna I'm gonna hit it pretty heavy with uh, with the the torch just to just to kind of let it flow there was a little bit of a fish eye with some junk that was in there I'm basically trying to hit it kind of hard with the heat uh, and let that float to the surface and kind of push it out. Now, before you get to smashing on that thumbs down and telling me how good uh, you are and I'm not and all the rest of that stuff, please refrain for a moment while I explain. Yes, we know it's ugly. We know it's not pretty. It's not supposed to be pretty. It's supposed to be a bright gold hot metal glue. It's not a it's not a decorator feature. It's just an old exhaust manifold with a leak in it. So here's the deal. Rarely do I ever get a chance in a, in a, in a, a weld repair like this to actually show you guys what the process did or why we chose this process. So since this is my truck and I can do whatever I want with it without worry about a customer coming back, let's grind this weld down and take a look at exactly what the aluminum bronze did and why we chose that process. Now the camera guy actually had the day off uh, when I shot this and I forgot to reset the camera so we're just going to kindly skip over this part and show you the result after grinding. Now check this out, you can see everywhere that we grooved it out or everywhere that we had a low spot, the aluminum bronze just kind of wetted in or flowed into that section and that's what we want. We don't really want any fusion between the metals, they're not blended uh, together as in completely fused, literally it's a hot metal glue that just kind of sticks to everything uh, extremely well uh, so to speak and that's the reason why we we'll use brazing on this one now well, just to recap real quick the torch is a heat source not the typical way that we run things with uh, with TIG welding we're just using it as a source of heat to melt the aluminum bronze the hotter we get the aluminum bronze the more it flows down into that crack and into that groove that we created now if we were to actually try to fuse all of these together then we're we're not going to get that kind of uh, strength and everything else that we need. We're going to introduce a lot of impurities, a lot of junk and everything else like that. And of course, if you've ever tried to TIG weld cast iron, you know that it just basically explodes on you and goes flying everywhere and contaminates everything in the process. So that's why we choose a brazing process over this. Now the primary reason behind choosing aluminum bronze as opposed to silicon bronze, which is another very popular brazing uh, filler metal, is the reason, biggest reasons why aluminum bronze has a high tensile strength than silicon bronze that's the main reason that I used it the second reason very small it, it does have a higher melting point than silicon bronze not by much I think it's only about a hundred degrees or so but on something that heat cycles quite often and is exposed to high exhaust gas temperatures that's why I used aluminum bronze as opposed to silicon bronze not to mention it welds extremely well on the AC side which means we can push out a lot of impurities a lot of junk and we can get it to wet in and flow uh, down into that crack and into the groove that we created so I'm gonna weld all of this back up again and then throw it back on the truck but that's pretty much all of the reasons and everything else behind this so hopefully that gives you a little bit of an insight on exactly why we use aluminum bronze or TIG brazing or anything like that. Now, if you've got any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments box below. I'll do my best to respond to them if I can. And of course, uh, if you need to get in touch with us, make sure you hit us up at the fabricationseries.com website, Instagram at the.fabricator or facebook.com slash thefabricatorseries. Now, I want to thank you guys for watching. As always, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future notifications and great videos. And I will see you guys on the next episode. And yeah, just in case you actually stuck through all that one, this is most likely going to be another really big project, and you might want to stick around for it. I don't have a name for it yet, but it's going to be insane if I actually find the time. You're still watching. And I appreciate that. Nobody's ever done what I'm thinking. Okay, yeah, really, I'm out of here. Thanks. See y'all later.